Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Steve Martin sent me an email at wishingstarfarm663 at msn.com. You can send me one too if you'd like. Anyways, what Steve wanted to know was, he said, I needed to make a new leather for my blowtorch. The piston in the pump is made from a piece of leather and his was missing. So he wants to know exactly how it looks so that he can make another one. Let's take mine apart and I'll show you. First, we'll remove the pump. Now this torch hasn't been cleaned, but the pump has. It's a nice choice to show you exactly how this thing looks. The piston is made up of two washers and a round leather disc. And I should be able to just slide that off. Now I can see that this is a piece of leather that has been formed into a cup shape. This has a rounded edge on it and a flat edge and the rounded edge goes down into the cup. You don't want to have a sharp edge against that leather that would make it cut or tear. Now, I have a basket of leather that uh, I got this at Hobby Lobby. And you want to use thin leather. This happens to be about 50 thousandths thick just a little less than a sixteenth just about a millimeter thick now some of that's probably from being in there and wearing and I could probably give you a guesstimate of what it's what the thickness is in the center yeah it's about sixty thousandths there that's closer to a sixteenth of an inch leather comes in all varieties of thicknesses depending upon what part of the animal it comes off of like this is uh, about 75 thousandths thick. It's got a rough outside and it's got a smooth side. For the longest time I thought this was the inside and this was the outside. It's actually opposite to that. This is the outside. Learn something every day. Anyways, so I take this cup and I can use the cup to trace it out or we can just say okay we're going to draw a one inch diameter circle. Go over here in the corner so we don't waste any more leather than we have to. Okay, that's a one inch diameter circle. put a mark where the center is just like so now I can take a pair of shears and trim this
Now I happen to own a punch that will let me punch a hole in the leather. And I'm just looking at the punch and saying, okay, yeah, it's about the right size. If you don't have a punch, you can use a nail. You can use a, a sharp jackknife or an X-Acto knife. Say perhaps something like this one to just cut that out. But since I have a punch, Now you can use, so I'm going to take this punch, and you're going to notice that I use a dead blow hammer. You can use a steel hammer with a punch. The only problem is the steel hammer is often quite hard, and it will cause the punch to mushroom. And the end of the punch will uh, swell out. You can see where I ground this one off, because somebody beat on it with a steel hammer. Dead blow hammer does the job. It doesn't damage the punch. doesn't damage what you're hitting. These are really cheap. You can get these at Harbor Freight. This is a power fist from Harbor Freight. One pound dead blow hammer. I forget how much I paid for it, but I don't think I paid any more than five bucks. They might be up to ten now. Everything's doubled. Now I have my leather and it's all cut and punched. The thing that has to happen next is longer than what this video will show. So we're just gonna talk about it. This leather needs to be soaked in oil. And then we wanna have the smooth side on the inside. So we're gonna form this by Once we have it soaked in oil, then we can take with the smooth side up and run it down over the threaded part of the pump shaft. Now you can see that this is not perfect. This is not a perfect circle. If I wanted to do this accurately, I would use a punch to cut out the one inch hole. Then with the washer locked down and the lock nut spun on, And that happens to be a 5 16 nut. So this is a 5 16 driver. These drivers are old and the, and the marking was on the rubber handle. And it is uh, just barely visible on there. Hard for me to see. So I usually just see which one fits. Now that you have this soaked in oil, and on there, you can then take your fingers and form it up until it looks like this does. Once you have it formed up, then this slips over there. You can see this leather is really pliable. 
it's been soaking in oil. Usually when I get one of these torches, it has been left dry for a number of years. And the leather is usually dry as a bone. Even though it's dry, it's not necessarily bad. You can put some oil into the pump, leave it set for a week or so, let it soak in there really good. Or, as in the case of this one, I took this section of the pump out and just set this down in a cup of oil like that. The leather is cup shaped and the way I insert it, that cup goes down. So as, as I push the piston down into the cylinder, this lip is forced out by the air pressure behind the piston, and it seals up against the walls of the cylinder. This check valve down here has a spring on it, so you have to overcome the resistance of the spring And once the air pressure reaches a high enough pressure, it pops open that check valve. And you can hear it kind of blow open. And that lets the air get down into the torch itself. It was holding pressure. I haven't gone through the rest of this torch. All I've done is clean the pump. I'm going to have to go through and clean out the nozzle because it seems like the nozzle's plugged. Anyways, make a long story short, that's how a pump works. Once you have pressure in the tank, this particular pump has a thread on the top that lets you lock that shaft in. Pure's doesn't, like this Turner, doesn't have a, a thread on it that locks it down. What you may see is when you were pumping, you get resistance in the pump. Then if, that, if this check valve at the bottom is leaking, this handle will come up. The air pressure that you build inside the fuel tank will force the fuel up through the bottom of the pump and will fill the pump. You don't want to have that. So if this handle is coming up on you, that means that you need to take apart the check valve and fix it. So Steve, that's how you make a piston for your pump. When you have your leather all oiled up and formed to make the piston, when you pull the piston up, the air just goes past the piston. There isn't any air pressure on the back side of this as you're pulling up. It actually creates a vacuum so it just draws air past that leather seal. So there's no check valve in this part. It's just the leather presses out when, you, when you're compressing it 
and then it folds up when you're pulling it out. It acts as its own check valve. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. If you do send me an email, remember that quite often they go into the spam. So if I don't answer right away, make a comment on one of the videos. I'll look for you.